This has to be one of the most splendid of our wild flowers, the Rose Bay Willow Herb. Glorious shafts of colour reaching up and positively trumpeting in the high summer. The Elizabethans knew a good thing when they saw one. It was one of their favourite garden flowers. But for any plant with this ability to produce such a mass stand of blooms, no garden wall would be strong enough to keep it in. So these days, it's just a lovely weed, more at home outside than inside the garden wall. Weed it may be, but a weed with flair, particularly for taking over not only large areas of countryside, but of city centres too. Its liking for city life began ironically only when many of our towns and cities were destroyed by the blitz bombing of the Second World War. And it was here in the harshness of destruction that the Rose Bay willow herb began to bloom, softening the ugly lines of war with gentle flowers. It made front page news because many people had never seen it before. Suddenly there, covering the ruins of their homes, was this strange, vibrant plant. And the bomb sites created by the World War II Blitz quite literally turned up dozens of new sites for Rose Bay willow herb night after night after night. They also produced one important element for the plant to thrive. Now, the clue is in its alternative name, fireweed. It will cash in on any recently burnt ground. What it does is to make use of the high nitrate content in the soil to germinate its seeds quickly and get one step ahead of the competition. Then it has plenty of living space, plenty of light. but it's by no means restricted to places where there's been fire or bombing. And these days it's got to be one of the commonest, as well as one of the jazziest wildflowers in the city. Not easy to miss with all its massed spikes of purple. The flowers open soon after sunrise and produce a great well of nectar to attract bees and other insects, which not surprisingly treated as highly popular. They tend to land on the lower flowers first, and then work their way upwards. The lower flowers are always the more mature ones. Their anthers are the first to wither, their stigmas the first to fork, ready to receive pollen. The bee arrives hopefully laden with pollen from another plant. As she rummages round after nectar, she sheds pollen mm. onto the ripe stigmas, mm -hmm. which will latch onto the grains and allow the pollen tube to probe down into the ovary. Further up the flower spike, the stigmas are immature and can't accept pollen, but at the same time, their stamens are at peak pollen production. And it's up here that still after nectar, the bee gets herself smeared with a new lot of sticky pollen grains. She then ferries these away to the ripe stigmas on the next spike she visits. A simple mechanism for cross-pollination. And with it, that startling colour begins to fade. Now the result of all this commuting by the bee is a more or less guaranteed seed set. But the willow herb's also got a very neat way of staggering its seed production line. Have a look here, and you can see that the bottom flowers on the spike are shedding their seeds before the top ones have even opened. But it's also a marvellous piece of natural engineering, this seed pod. When it's ripe, it unzips, just like a banana. Inside, little downy seeds waiting to be blown away by the breeze. And there's no doubt which way the Rose Bay's seeds are designed to get about. Each one takes to the air with a long feathery kite tail to waft it on the gentlest of breezes to a distant forest clearing or to the centre of London. 
But Rose Bay willow herb isn't without its problems, living in a city where places to grow may very well not be there for more than a year. Derelict inner city sites tend not to stay derelict for long, and perennials generally need two years to get established. If it's strictly a here-today, gone-tomorrow type site, then it's better suited to plants with annual-like habits, such as the Oxford ragwort. But should the site hang around derelict for several years, then the annuals simply get outcompeted, because then it's the perennials with their long, creeping runners that soon enable them to get the upper hand, or leaf. But these days, even the Rose Bay has its competitor. Its monopoly of the inner city has been challenged by the arrival of a new alien, the Budlia. And again, it's a garden escape that's become naturalized. It has an almost magnetic attraction for butterflies. Its popular name is the butterfly bush. So not only do willow herb and buddleia grace the urban landscape themselves, they also bring with them for partners some of the loveliest of insects, not to mention some of the strangest. Among the Rose Bay's visitors is the caterpillar of the elephant hawk moth, chomping its way through the leaves in preparation for next year's change into a great pink moth. Now, there was one other important development which boosted the rapid spread of Rose Bay through the urban and industrial landscape. And that was this, the railway. Back in the old days of steam, hot coals used to pop out from the engines and set light to the embankments. But even today, they still burn off sidings and cuttings. And what more irresistible invitation to this charcoal lover to join the modern age of the train? Indeed, the seeds are often to be seen hitching a free lift in the slipstream of trains. So, a plant that's made a roaring success out of living in partnership with man, spreading these brilliant purple swords over the countryside wherever it gets the chance. It uses our lifestyle to further its own, and it's probably going to be around for as long as we are. Truly a weed, but a weed with flair.